Hello and welcome. In today's video I will show you how to create an endpoint for uploading files. As the bonus I will show you the integration with the S3 service for saving the files in the cloud. So please watch this video till the end to not miss any part. Ok, without any further ado let's get started. The goal of today's lesson is to add the endpoint for uploading the pictures. We won't keep the images in our local database. Instead we will use the AWS S3 service. We're going to use S3 because it's the most efficient way of storing the images. It's cheap and easy to work with. So, each time the API receives the file, it will send it to S3. Then, it will only save the URL to S3 resource in our local database. To implement this functionality, we have to extend the recipe model. Before the lesson, I've added a new field to recipe model. I call it image. The field will contain the public URL to the image. Then I've created migration for altering the recipe table. It's pretty simple stuff. If you're new to my channel, in the past I created a video about database migration in type ORM. You can check it here. Great. Knowing the full requirements and having revision of the code done, we're ready to start actual implementation. Let's open the recipe controller file. At the bottom, let's add a new method called add image to recipe. This method will be only accessible for authenticated user. So I will annotate it with the useGuard decorator. Again, I did a video about authentication. It's available here. The add image to recipe will be the HTTP POST method and the path will be slash ID slash upload file. I'm adding the ID to the path because we have to connect the image with specific recipe. Next. I will set the ID as an input parameter of a function. I can copy the code from the patch endpoint. It will be the same. Also, I will add the request parameter to access the user from the incoming request object. But that's not all what we need. To handle the file uploading, Nest provides a built-in module based on the Malter middleware package for Express. To use this module, we don't have to install any additional packages. However, the TypeScript types are missing. So, we will add them now. For that, let's open the terminal and type npm install dash d add types slash malter. We would like to access the file inside the method. For that, we have to import the express package first. The type of an incoming file can be set as express.malter.file. To make this file truly available in the input, we have to do two additional things. Firstly, we have to use the uploaded file decorator before the file. This decorator just extracts the file from the request object. To make the file available in the request object, we have to annotate the endpoint with another yet decorator. It's called use interceptors. Interceptors are another yet NestJS entities. They allow for binding extra logic before or after the method execution. We will pass here the file interceptor. It's a built-in interceptor for uploading the files. We have to provide to it the name of the file's key. It's not a file's name, it's just the key we will use when sending a file. In our case, I set it to be equal to file. Great, now we can simply console log the file and reveal what is inside. To start the development server, let's type docker compose app inside the terminal window. Let's wait a while for app to start. We're starting the new instance of the app, so the database will be empty. To test the endpoint, let's create the user first. Then, let's use the login endpoint to get the JWT token. Finally, let's create some recipe. Remember, the image will be attached to the recipe, so we need one. Endpoint for creating recipes is protected, so we have to set authorization header here. Ok, now we have the recipe created, but there is one last step. Let's get the recipe ID by using the get endpoint. Ok, now we're ready to upload the file. Let's copy and paste the recipe ID to the path. Also, let's add the JWT token to the headers to authenticate the request. Next, inside the body tab, inside the Thunder client, let's pick the form tab. There is a place where we can pick the files to send. We're sending the files 
like in the HTML form, so that's why the tab is so called. Here you can see the files key. It has to match the key we have specified in the interceptor. On the right hand side you can see the file I picked to be sent. Ok, when I click send, after a few moments you can see 201 status. When we look into the logs, you can see there the field name, the original name of the file, type of the file, as well as the buffer. Ok, now we're ready. Now let's implement the logic for saving the file. In the recipe controllers file, I will extract the user email from the request and I will call the add file to recipe method. This method of recipe service not exists yet. That's our next task, to implement it. The method needs the file, recipe ID and the user's email. The method will be asynchronous, so let's add the await keyword before it. Ok, now let's open the recipe service. Firstly, let's add the required method and let's define the input parameters. We can copy them from the method invocation inside the controller file. Now let's add the types. Again, for the file we have to import the express interface from the express packet. Then we can annotate the file parameter as express.malter.file. Finally, the ID and the email are simple, they are just strings. Ok, now let's add the function body. Firstly, we have to find the recipe of provided ID. If none exists, we will throw the error. Then we will check if the recipe belongs to the user. If not, again, we will throw the error. In fact, we implemented such logic in the patch endpoint. We can copy and paste this code. Normally, in the daily job, I would suggest extract this logic to separate method to avoid code duplication. Today, we will skip this part, just for simplicity. Next, if everything is alright, we have to save this file to S3. Managing the S3 is another type of responsibility than creating recipes. I think it's a good idea to create a separate service for that. So, in the new terminal window, please type nest g m o s3. This will generate a new module. Then type nest g s s3 to generate s3 service. Let's open the newly generated s3 module. We have to add the s3 service to export array. We will use this service in the recipe service. Next, let's move to the recipe module file. Inside the imports array, I will add S3 module. This will allow me to inject the S3 service into the recipe service. So let's do it. Let's pass the S3 service into the constructor of the recipe service. Great, we have done required setup and we can focus on learning AWS S3 service. The S3 is cost effective object storage in the cloud. It scales infinitely, provides high availability and provides great level of security. It's my first choice for storing images. To follow my next steps, you have to have an active AWS account. If you don't have, don't worry, you can still watch the video and learn something useful. Ok, let's log in into AWS Cloud and inside the search bar let's type S3. Don't mistake the scalable storage with archive storage. We have to click on S3, not on S3 Glacier. Then, on the next page, we have to find the button called Create Bucket. You can think about the bucket as of the directory in the cloud. It's just a concept for a place where your object will live. Let's click the button. Then, we should see the Create Bucket form. Each bucket has to be named. Moreover, the name has to be unique for the whole AWS cloud. I will name mine Recipe API Test. Next, we have to pick the AWS region. Pick the one nearest to your location. To me, it will be a London region. Moving forward, we will set ACLS enabled. ACLS is shorthand from Access Control List. I will explain it more when we will be working on code sending images to S3. In the next section, you can see the public access settings. By default, there is no public access to your bucket, it's only yours. But our use case is different. We're building the API for the frontend. The client app needs the public access to our images. We will enable public access by unchecking this checkbox. In fact, it won't be full public. We will use ACLS to set only public grid for objects.
Next, we have to confirm the acknowledgement about public access. Then, let's leave the bucket versioning disabled and let's leave the tags empty. When we scroll to the bottom, let's click the Create Bucket button. Then, you will see the page showing all of the active buckets inside your AWS account. When you click on the bucket name, you will see all of its objects. Currently, we have no objects. That's fine, we will add some in the minute. That's enough for now. Let's go back to the code. Let's open the S3 service file again. Here, we will create one method. Let's call it upload file. The method will take the file as an input and additionally the key. Again, the file is type of express.malter.file. While the key is concept related to S3. In S3, the key is a unique ID of the file inside the bucket. To actually interact with S3, we have to install an additional package. For that, let's open the terminal and type npm install at aws sdk slash client s3. Now, after the successful installation, we can import required interfaces. We will use the S3 client, its object required for communication between our code and the S3 service. Then we have the put object command and its input and output. This is the command we will use to put the files to S3. Okay, next, let's inject the config through the class constructor. I've added two more keys to the .env file, the S3 bucket and the S3 region. For the first one, we have to provide the name of the bucket we have created in the AWS console. To me is recipe-api-test. As a region, we have to set the region we are operating in. To me it's EU West 2. Next, we will create two class fields, one for region and the second one for S3 client. Next, we will read the AWS region from the config service and we will assign it to the variable. Finally, to finish the constructor method, we have to initialize the S3 client. The client needs the configuration object. The bare minimum is to provide the AWS region. Now, one super important note. The client uses the access key and the secret key to authenticate to AWS Cloud. You can pass them here as a credential object. However, I want to do that. By default, AWS SDK searches the host file system for AWS configs file. If such config file is created, the SDK will read the secret key and the access key from that config file. In that case, and only in that case, there is no need for passing credentials object to S3 client. Ok, finally, we are ready to implement the upload file method. Let's start from reading the bucket name from the config service. We have to know in which bucket we will put objects. Next, let's prepare the input for the put object command. Firstly, there has to be the body sent. In our case, it's a files buffer. Next, I will specify the bucket name and the object's key. We will give a hint to S3 of a type of a file. For that, I will set the content type key to be equal files content type. Finally, we will set the ACLS property. As I said previously, the pictures have to be publicly available to allow the frontend to fetch them. So, the ACLS setting will be equal to the public read. Now we can try to use this input and send the command. But each AWS command may throw the error. I will use the try and catch clause. I will use the send command of a S3 object passing there a new instance of a put object command. The command is a promise type, so I have to await for a response. Next, from the response, we can get the metadata object. In it, there is a HTTP status. When the status is equal to 100, it means success of the action. Unfortunately, the response object doesn't contain the URL to the bucket object. But fear not, the object in the S3 buckets have standardized URLs. We can build one manually. So, the URL will be equal to HTTPS bucket name dot S3 dot region dot Amazon AWS dot com slash the key of the object. Next, outside the if statement, I will throw the error. If there is a other status than 200, the image wasn't uploaded successfully. In the catch part, I would like to log the error. So, let's create the instance of the logger first. 
Then, back in the method, I will use the newly created loggers method called error to log the error message. Finally, I will retro the error. Our error filters will do the rest to handle this error. Cool, the method is implemented. Now we can use it in the recipe service. So, after checking the user's email, I will call the upload file method and I will pass there the file and the key. We don't have the key yet, so I will create a new variable called key and I will assign to it files field name and the current timestamp. After passing the key to the method, I will assign the result of the invocation of the method to the variable and I will await for result. Finally, I will use the update method of the recipe repository to save the recipe image URL as the URL of specific recipe. That's it. The whole logic is done. There is no more left than testing. Let's once again open the Thunder client and let's send the upload file request. Great, as you can see there is 200 status. Let's use the get recipes endpoint and check if there is a URL attached to the recipe. Yes, there it is. Now I will copy it and try to open it in the browser. Great, now you can see the image that I uploaded. Now it's available to all other people. Everything works. After finishing playing with app, let's delete the S3 bucket. It's always a good practice to delete unused resources in the cloud to not pay any additional money. For deleting the S3 bucket, we have to remove the object first. For that, let's check the checkbox next to the file we want to delete and click the delete button. And then let's confirm the deletion by typing permanently delete. Let's close the pop-up. And then let's go back to the main buckets view. Finally, let's pick the bucket we want to delete and click delete button. To delete bucket, we have to type the bucket name and click delete bucket button. So that's it. We have implemented the whole recipe app. That was a long and informative journey. Thank you for being a part of it. Despite the end of the app implementation, there is still a lot to learn. In the near future, I will create videos about GraphQL and WebSockets. So stay tuned. See you next time.